When I try to tell people that I grew up with foster kids, my favorite story, it's a, it's a point of levity, but it really just, it's so potent. It should show you like how like your normal just changes. Oh, fall asleep in your bunk bed, 13, 12, 11. You wake up in the middle of the night and there's just some strange human being like in your bunk bed, not up here in your one bedroom mattress. Okay. Facing you like this, just breathing on your face. You, you get through the fog of sleep. Uh, that's a foster kid. You go back to sleep. The terrain is just always changing to the point where you're just like, I guess. Complete acceptance. I guess this happened, right? Yeah. The gift my parents were able to give me and my biological siblings is perspective. The, the earlier you can get your children to have perspective, the less they're going to be like punks. And the, I think the easier those teenage narcissism years will be. All that stuff, I think, will be alleviated by like, you take somebody to the third world, for example, you see poverty. Having natural empathy. Exactly. It, young. it gives okay. you like perspective. Because if you live in America, a semi-charmed life, two parents that love you, you just, the curse of that is just the silliness that fills your thoughts and the, the you're, you're ungrateful and all. And I was all sure. those things as a kid too. But I just really think having very intimate exposure to this, even vicariously, like these care workers, these support groups, their children get to be a part of this. And aren't we looking for ways to, to build our children into kingdom-minded people. True. And it's almost like like one of the most beautiful things about this um, Keystone Alliance, it's like somebody comes to you as a believer, gives you a neatly organized, pack, bow-packaged yes. way of being true religion. Yes. Like here it is, easy. I do all the work for you, you just have to just like open it. Right. Where's your head at when you took this on? You got three sure. kids, lots of reasons to say no. Three all kids, that lots of reasons to say no. Um, oldest being three years old, so three three and under. Um, when Keystone Family Alliance came and spoke at the church, you know, you're sitting there and uh, listening to the call. As care communities got started here, the call was to bring dinner once a month. I love to cook. That felt extremely feasible, that I right. could easily double, double a meal that I'm going to feed my kids um, to give somebody else the opportunity to take a break. When I had our last one, um, Encounter stepped up and brought oh, us meals, meals first, but it made a massive difference. And we had not one bad meal. So that that was so impactful for us um, that I'm looking at this thinking, wow, these families that we get to support, a lot of these kids have lived through the, some kind of trauma. And so it's not just running them to sports and having a little extra time to sit around the dinner table without having to cook. It's giving them time to have have conversations. It's a great way to look at it. To just play as kids. It's creating bandwidth for the parent in a host of ways. Everything would be restoration with these kids. If you think about it, innocence has been broken. Psychological damage has mm -hmm. obviously set in. Just like a restorative savior, you know, all of this is a, low, a long crawl to restoration in a child's life. But seeing your parents do it, or that your adoptive parents or your foster parents, it's all like, you know, you, you can just dismiss it as like, you signed up for this, you're the, you're the punching bag. When you see like multiple people come alongside your life, it's very hard to write that off. You almost got to do business with that. Like you almost say, okay, now everybody, I guess, isn't out to get me. Right. Everybody isn't going to hurt me, which is really what you're dealing with there. We're called to support the, the widows and orphans. And though these children, most of them are not orphans, to some degree they are. And, but how do you do that? How do you help? And them? how do you do it when you're like three kids? All that, right? Somebody yeah. says, here's a way to do it. I did all the hard work, all oh, the heavy lifting. Excellent. Make some mac yeah. and cheese. And we got, uh, when we got introduced to our, our foster family, um, all four of our families went into their home and we had pizza with them and the kids. We got to know them. We got to hear about food preferences. We got to meet the kids. Um, it was all of an hour, but we got to meet each other too. We've got a group text that goes, um, you know, that we communicate. Um, when I get to drop off, um, I get, you know, it depends on the day, but it oftentimes get to sit and have a nice half hour conversation if I want to. Um, other times I'm, I'm running and you're like handing, handing <laughs> yeah, right through the door. Yeah, but right. It's also helping us um, meet people in the church. It's actually, it's like most things with service. It's like you think the blessing is the recipient of it. But there's so much real potent blessing to the giver too. And that's like, that's the Beatitudes, isn't it? The kingdom is different than you think it is. One of the biggest um, goals and cries of my heart right now is to turn these two little boys 
into righteous young men that are salt and light and light up the dark. I mean, I want it more than I want them to be successful. I want it more than everything. But the reality is, is like we're Christians living in Babylon. That's what we are. Okay. We're li- like in meaning everywhere I look, you know, very few people, we were just talking about the phones, you and I off camera. Yeah. People don't share my values most of the time. If I were to tell them that that's a goal of child rearing, I have friends and neighbors and people that would look at me like, what, what are you even talking about? That doesn't even make any sense. Sure. So I'm just saying that some somebody offering me a chance for my whole family to like practice true religion, gain perspective, gain empathy, understand that this is even something that people, children of light do this. They inconvenience their lives and take in children that don't have all that. Um, I grew up on a street where um, my aunts and uncles lived down the road. So Doors were never locked. There was never, um, they were also never knocked on. We just walked through the doors and got very comfortable with that. But now with our culture and our cell phones, I donate a lot of breast milk to, to people. They don't come to my door and knock. They sit in their car and they message me and say, I'm here. So I think there's this like fear of cooking someone a meal and having to go up to their door um, and, and hand it off. But Really, there's there can be as much interaction as as you prefer. I like that. You That's don't. a really cool way to explain it. Yeah, but it it does stretch us. These are these are people you don't know. It does stretch and you're you. Going to their home. I promise you one thing. I've discovered: if you serve somebody tomorrow, you won't be depressed. Um, it's a fact. Yeah, and as a as a church member, it's easy to to come in on Sundays and to um and to sit in the pews and. Um, and be fed. It, it is, it's great. We all need this. But I've come to find over um, my adult life, because, you know, you're a teenager, you're, um, you're in the youth group, and, and you're on the drama team, and you're, it's very easy to be involved. But once you hit college and above, if you don't stay involved in the church, one, it's easy to leave. And, um, and two, you're, the level That's of good. what you're being fed is, is not enough. So we have to we have to get involved um, to give of ourselves to be fed more. In my opinion, it's a weird thing in the Western Church. Like the things that we pay a lot of attention to. For example, I'm involved in one of them, um, worship. They suck a lot of air out of the room. But the truth is, is like the ones that are really like glue and um, the kind of thing a person talks about at a funeral or something. I think it's these ministries that we don't pay a lot of attention to. The meal ministry came up several times in this conversation. So something like that, it's very easy to think of that as like a fringe thing. But the, it, it's just the opposite. Right. And it's the same thing here. It's like these things that just have a way of being like fish and loaves somehow. They just really do. They like have a, I've just seen it. I've yeah. seen it. I'm convinced of it. When we were living in Lidditz. We um, lived cat a corner from a really wonderful Christian man. He started inviting my husband to a men's breakfast and, and whatnot. And we got pregnant and he organized five families in the neighborhood to bring us meals. And we started meeting all of our neighbors. We started going to backyard fires with them and, and got to got a small community. And then then we moved and we had our second child and we didn't have a community. We barely knew anyone to our left or right. We never talked to anybody. It was the most lonely year. Right. We now live in, in, in the tree streets in, in Palmyra, have worked very hard at meeting our neighbors, uh, of building relationships with them. feels so good now to have this community of people who who do watch out for us. If our if our if my van door is open for too many hours, um, I forget about it. They like come knock on my door like, is everything okay? I really relate to that one. And I and yeah. we need that. But not everybody has, no. has that community. In fact, and shouldn't the church be that? Yes. Anyway. It's one of our most attractional things as the body of Christ. It was in the Acts church. It just is. It's, it's a sense of community. Human beings need it. And ironically enough, this generation is really dying on the vine with that. Like right. the phones and the social media and stuff. It's all like taking in food without any calories. That's what I, that's the analogy. Sure. It is. It's like cotton yeah. candy eating. Yeah. You wonder well, why you're starving. You don't have real community. You don't have real people. I always tell these kids I mentor, I'm like, you know who my closest friends are? They're the people that I went through like difficult times with, fought with, yeah. had awkward, allowed to say things to me that I disagreed with. Sure. The irony is that's the fiber that binds. That's the glue. People just tail, blowing smoke all the time and telling you everything you want to hear. Those are not your friends. People do not love you. 
and those relationships will not last. So that's just one thing, but they don't even have that. They, 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 they don't have anything. And I, I know firsthand because of talking families, um, your husband's age and your age in the lobby, got all these transitory professionals that moved here from like Iowa. Okay. Whatever. Sure. And now they're like two kids in and they have been straight up in the trenches of child rearing, right? Colic, baby number one, they, whatever, you know it. Yeah. No date for two straight years because there's no grandparents around. Yeah. Right? Think about yeah. this. Your marriage is on the rocks. So anyway, my whole diatribe is all about like, just imagine what they need. What you're talking about community is so much more powerful than we know. Like oh. things can happen that way. And so Keystone talks about how, what, 90% of um, of foster parents quit after the first year. Some some really- If they don't effort. have the support group. If they don't have the, yeah. a support group, right? So these people have been called to bring in the orphans into their home and to love them but then don't have enough support and can't sustain it. Can't sustain it. So how cool that we get to and pray for them and listen to them. What what minimal effort I, I'm truly putting in to help someone else um, fulfill their calling. I think it's beautiful what you said. It's like minimal effort with like huge kingdom reward. When you see a ministry like this kind of organically creep up, it's very encouraging because it's a sign of health. Yeah. It's like it's like a nice plump apple on the tree. So thank you for doing that. Good. My family's going to do it. It's delightful having this conversation with you. I really, really appreciate it.